Hi, I'd like to return some M&Ms I bought yesterday. Whoa, you're the Human Torch. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I was told they wouldn't melt in my hand, but well, I'm sure you can guess what happened. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Can I see your receipt? Unfortunately, that also burned up in my hand. Do you have the credit card that you used to make the purchase with? Also burned up in my hand. Okay, well, do you at least have the bag of it? What's so hard to understand about this? If I hold it, it burns up. Okay, okay, geez. Here's your refund. <sighs> I, I don't know what I expected. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that feeds you sweet drops of info in a crunchy theory shell. Now, we've talked about food mascots, food myths, and food cliches, but I don't think we've talked too much about food slogans yet. There's just so much in a slogan. A few short words can make or break an entire brand. Yo quiero Taco Bell, it's finger looking good, I'm loving it, have it your way, they're great! Every single one of those conjures up a specific image and feeling in my brain, and it makes me want fried chicken tacos sprinkled with fries and frosted flakes, but arguably one of the most iconic and long-lived food slogans in history is the iconic M&M's melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Even though it clocks in at a whopping eight words, for the better part of a century it's proved to be unforgettable, not to mention verifiable. I mean, most of these slogans are pretty darn vague. They're great! Entirely subjective there, Kellogg's. Eat fresh? How fresh is fresh, Subway? The worst though is probably I'm loving it from McDonald's. I mean, what is it? By eating McDonald's, Am I pledging my allegiance to an alien space clown who feeds on fear? The pronoun has no antecedent. Anyway, Mars is stepping up their game. They're putting their money where their slogan is, and I respect that. M&M's presents a totally testable assertion right there. M&M's will melt in your mouth, but not in your hands. Unfortunately for them, though, that also leaves the scientific door wide open for me to show you that the slogan is not only inaccurate, it's also completely misleading. M&M's will totally melt in your hand, and at the same time, will not melt in your mouth. Let me show you how one of Candy's most iconic slogans is a complete and total lie. Yeah, I know, I'm out on a thin candy ledge with this one, but you clicked on this video, so now you're invested and you're about to learn way more than you wanted to know about the chemistry and thermodynamics of M&M's. Strap in, friends, this is gonna be a fun one. To begin, M&M's have been coated in a hard shell of candy science since their inception in 1941, 80 years ago this year. Their tidy little candy shell was originally patented as a less messy way to eat chocolate, and this became especially useful during World War II. At the time, MREs and Red Cross packages to soldiers fighting overseas included everything that was considered essential. Some canned meat, some dried fruit like raisins, 80 cigarettes, obviously, and, you guessed it, some chocolate. The problem was that while everything else arrived intact, chocolate was a melty, hazardous mess. It wasn't able to survive the airplane trips and transport trucks in the literal heat of battle. So when the US entered the war, M&Ms entered an exclusive military contract with the US government to ensure that chocolate would arrive to troops intact. In other words, what am I doing here? If it's good enough for the greatest generation, shouldn't it be good enough for the YouTube generation? Is an 80-year-old track record not enough, Matt Pat? Well, today I think it's time that I stop ruining only the childhoods of Gen Z and Millennials and give boomers and up a chance. I am an equal opportunity childhood ruiner, what can I say? So while M&Ms were vital to the war effort by promoting a mess-free chocolate experience, that slogan is still far from accurate. First, let's look at the main claim of the slogan, M&M's do not melt in your hand. At first blush, this seems like it should be easy to prove. M&M's shells are made from a blend of sugar and corn syrup. The melting point for corn syrup is 146.1 degrees Celsius, that is 295 degrees Fahrenheit. Our hands are not coming anywhere close to those temperatures. Normal human skin temperature is 91 degrees Fahrenheit, with some areas being warmer like under your armpit where you sometimes see kids getting their temperatures taken. And also so you tend to be colder at your extremities. In truth, your hand surface temperature is gonna vary based on your BMI, your blood pressure, air temperature, but stays roughly between 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, or 29 to 35 C. Even in the hottest, reliably measured temperatures on Earth, 130 degrees Fahrenheit, it would seem like the corn syrup portion of the candy shell isn't in danger of melting in your hand. And if it does somehow melt, well, you've got some bigger fires to put out. As for the sucrose sugar portion of the candy shell, that one is definitely not melting in your hand. The actual 
melting point is 366 degrees Fahrenheit or 185 degrees Celsius, but long before the sugar is melting, it's actually reacting. Sugar molecules are highly reactive, especially with all the things in your body, or more specifically the things on your hand, aka sweat. The two main components of sweat on your palm are water and salt, and they surround and interact with the sucrose molecules of the candy, which we usually just call dissolving. Know how M&Ms sometimes leave a ring of candy dye on your hand if they're left there for too long? That's not melting, which is strictly dependent on temperature, it's the candy actually reacting with your sweat by dissolving in it. Yeah, it is super gross, and the hotter your hand, the more soluble the salty water on your sticky little palms become, which means the more candy shell that you can dissolve in there. So just know that when the M&M finally hits your mouth, you're eating some delicious chocolate wrapped in a thin coating of candy and sweat. Mmm, tasty. And when you pop it in your mouth, the exact same thing happens where the sugar isn't melting, again based on temperature, the M&M is sitting in your mouth and dissolving in your saliva. So technically, we've already disproven some of the slogan. The candy shell can't melt in your mouth or your hand because the melting point for the candy shell is just way too high. It's actually dissolving. So I think it's time we adopt a more truthful slogan here, Mars. Pitch number one, dissolves in your mouth, less so in your hand. Uh, if you don't like that one, here's pitch number two, doesn't melt in your mouth, but you are eating a little of your own sweat every time. Mm -mm. Then again, there's always pitch number three, where we instead choose to focus on the candy's milk chocolate insides as opposed to the candy itself. M&M's, the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Wait, I, I, I thought it was just melts in your mouth, not your hand. Did he just say the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand? Ho hold on, hold on. What, was it always like this? No. Oh, it was. Haha, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, sure. Hey, guys! Did you know that the M&M slogan is and has always been about the milk chocolate? Yeah, apparently they weren't talking about the candy shell at all. The full slogan has and has always been the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. The milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. While you don't tend to see the full slogan written in print in the commercials, they do voice over the full wording with their announcer, and they do save it for large-scale advertisements like this print poster from 1985, and this one, and these. And all of these two. So, uh, yeah, it is definitely the chocolate, and I definitely knew that this entire time. Am I the only person in the world who doesn't remember the milk chocolate bit? A little Google Trend search results here? Precisely! No one in the world is searching for this complete phrase. And here's the best twist of all, it doesn't even matter. Mars is still wrong. I'm still gonna prove why their slogan is complete bunk. M&M's milk chocolate does, in fact, melt in your hand. That's right, Mars, you haven't stopped me yet. I'm still coming for ya. We start off with some pretty damning evidence against their claim. M&M's chocolate does have a melting point that's lower than body temperature, between 86 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which we've established is practically the exact temperature temperature range of the average human hand. So while yes, the candy coating doesn't melt, remember, the slogan isn't about that. It's about the chocolate. And the science says that the chocolate inside would definitely melt if it were in direct contact with your hand. So now the question is whether the candy shell is a good enough insulator to keep the chocolate inside from getting so hot that it melts. Which means it's time to bring home this episode with the thing you've all been waiting for, some sweet, sweet thermodynamics. Because the shell itself isn't melting, we have no idea what's actually going on on the inside side until we do some math. If the sugar coating were a perfect insulator, in other words, if it didn't transfer any heat to the chocolate at all, we would know 100% that the inside isn't gonna melt. If M&Ms were coated with something like, say, silicone or wool, we'd be pretty sure that the milk chocolate interior isn't heating up, since silicon and wool are great insulators. But a thin shell of sugar? I mean, how much heat is that really gonna stop? Well, because the internet is the internet, we can actually do the calculation based on the thermal conductivity of sugar and corn syrup, which are both right around 0.15 watts per meter times K. The difference in temperature between one side and the other. Yeah, that is the unit of measure, and they are just as insane as they sound. Suffice it to say, a big number here means that the material is a great conductor of heat. Typically, metals fall into this category, about 100 watts per meters times K, which is why all the pots in your kitchen are made of metal. They pass the heat straight from your stove directly to the food. The lower the number, the better insulator the material is, like styrofoam at 0.003. Sugar has a 
thermal conductivity of 0.15, which is shockingly low, actually a whole lot lower than I expected, thereby making sugar way better at insulating than you might think. But is it enough to protect our chocolatey centers? Not quite. You see, while the candy coating is a pretty darn good insulator, the shell itself is incredibly thin, less than a millimeter thick. After trying very unsuccessfully to measure it with a ruler, I found this incredible recursive analysis of an M&M done online by Dan. Just, just Dan. Well, Dan calculates the candy shell to be 0.795 millimeters thick. You know what? I'm inclined to take his word for it because this was like theorist levels of unnecessarily rigorous. So if we use all the information out there that the internet's gathered about M&Ms, like the weight of an M&M at 1.3 grams, the surface area of the shell at 3.55 square centimeters, the conductivity of sugar and the specific heat of chocolate, we can actually calculate how much energy we would need to heat the candy shell from room temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit to the melting point of chocolate 86 degrees Fahrenheit at minimum. This is our equation. And to save you the math, the TLDR here is that we don't need that much energy to do it. Less than the energy needed to heat up a cup of coffee. Just exposing the M&M to the heat of our hand in an indoor environment, the chocolate inside the candy shell won't melt instantly, but should melt after 251 seconds. 4.1 minutes. And, uh, yeah, I get it. You don't plan on holding an M&M in your hand for that long, especially after I told you it's reacting to your sweat the entire time. But let's take the candy outdoors. At an ambient temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit, we need less than half that time to start melting the chocolate. 1.9 minutes. If the ambient temperature is above the melting point of chocolate, well, now we're looking at less than one minute for a chocolate meltdown. 34 seconds if the outside is 90 degrees. And the thing is, while it might seem unfair to test the candy outdoors in the summer heat, that's actually at its most fair. Look at the way these things are marketed. They're specifically shown as a candy on the go, especially in outdoor environments. Look at this commercial from a beachside bar in the summer, where, by the way, this guy's just squeezing the life out of these M&Ms for a long time. Here's some kids at the beach. Here's one at an outdoor concert. Here's one in terrible quality for the Summer Olympics back in 1984, which were held in Los Angeles where it hit 105 degrees Fahrenheit or 41 degrees Celsius. Heck, remember that the whole point of these candies in the first place was that you could expose them to high heat and send them overseas to the military. But in reality, it's all false. In fact, there's only one last thing for me to do. Test them IRL. Cue the footage of me holding M&Ms for an egregiously long amount of time. Turn the clock right here for four minutes. And now we wait. Honestly, the hardest part of this challenge is me not eating the M&Ms. <laughs> well, I'm standing here looking like an idiot doing science by holding a bunch of M&Ms in my hand. You can take the time to go down to the top line of the description and sign our petition to get me as the next host of Jeopardy. Yep, we are trying to convince the world that this man right here, this man holding M&Ms in his hand for science, deserves to be the next host of Jeopardy. So timer's all up. Now it's time for me to open up my hand and cut inside the M&Ms to show you that the chocolate inside should be melted. And to show you the difference here, this is a solid m and I'm pushing down on it really hard and it took a lot of effort. And you can see chocolate inside is solid, right? Now, based on our calculations, it should have been about four minutes. Candy shell should be intact, but when I press down on it, it should kind of ooze out or at least be a lot gooier, right? So here we go. I've got so many in my hand right now. This is already not looking too good. Here we go. Push. Oh, look at it. Ooze. Ooze. Oh, yeah. That is gooey and melted. It's not quite like fully liquid. It's not like... It's not liquid, but it certainly is melted. So there you have it, friends. I don't know if this is surprising anyone at all since we're people actually asking this question, but... To be fair, makers of M&M's, the truth comes out, the milk chocolate inside does in fact melt in your hand, whether or not you realize it. It's just melted on the inside of your candy coated shell. So, you know, maybe a little bit more precision in advertising, huh? At the end of the day, the M&M slogan is 100% false every way you slice it. The chocolate inside the shell isn't staying solid. In fact, it's melting most of the time. It's melting in your mouth, your hand, your shirt pocket. It is melting in the bag sitting on your car seat every day from April to October. These things are melting everywhere. The chocolate just winds up sloshing around inside the candy shell. And when it's not melting, well, the candy shell is just dissolving in your sweat and your saliva. So, Mars, I'm just gonna fix the slogan once and for all. You don't have to pay me for this one. You ready? 
M&M's melts inside the candy shell, which is separated from you and all the other stuff that you don't want covered in chocolate by less than a millimeter of sugar. Okay, I admit it doesn't really roll off the tongue, but I believe in truth and advertising here, people. 2021, the year of transparency for M&M's. And now if you'll excuse me, I actually really love M&M's despite me spending the last 16 minutes dunking on them. And all this science has actually given me a hankering for those ones with the Rice Krispies inside. Oh, they're so good. And then there's the ones with the peanut butter inside. Ah, anyway, I'm gonna go get those. Remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. You know who has a slogan that isn't full of lies? Our sponsor for today's episode, Noom. Steph and I have been on Noom's program since April, and so far, so great. Never, never in my life have I stuck to a health program for this long, and I have Noom's unique approach to thank for that. Their program has really helped us look at our health through the lens of psychology and cognitive behavioral therapy. Our program doesn't so much stress calories and carbs, which honestly is great news for us considering Steph and I occasionally have to eat our body weight and junk food for these food theory experiments. But instead, the program focuses on addressing our habits and routines on a daily basis. The first thing that really clicked with me was my water intake. I've been a thirsty boy for a long, long time. A lot of that is due to my unhealthy soda habits, but thanks to Noom, I'm actually much, much better about keeping track of how much water I'm consuming day after day, which means I am significantly less dehydrated than I used to be. And thanks to their simple, actionable recommendations like making sure that I have one green item on my plate for dinner, I've been able to lose weight while feeling healthier in the process. And the thing is, at no point has it ever felt like a strain. It's an incredibly effective strategy that uses psychological principles to ensure that you're enacting a healthier lifestyle for yourself in as easy and painless of a way as possible. I've lost a lot of the weight that I've been looking to shave off. I've also felt healthier on a day-to-day -day basis, and none of it has felt like a hassle or imposition on my day-to-day -day life. I'm telling you, if I can stick to a health program for over four months with the crazy, unpredictable schedule that we have on a day-to-day -day basis, then I guarantee that you can too. Go to Noom.com slash food theory to take your free 30-second quiz, or you know what? Just use my link in the description below and get started today. The Noom program has Steph and I feeling fantastic, not just because we're eating better, but also because there's a huge sense of accomplishment that comes with staying on track for this long. I feel like I'm making healthier decisions for myself. I cannot recommend it enough. Again, all it takes to get started with Noom is a free 30-second quiz at Noom.com slash food theory. Just give that link in the description a click, and as always, remember, it's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite flavor of M&Ms are. There's like 300 of them at this point, and uh, I'll see y'all next week. Oh, they're so good. Where's that bag of Krispies? They discontinued them? Oh, Mars, you just brought upon yourself a world of hurt.